Hey guys, welcome to all of you on our channel that is Achieve IES. So friends, as you know that on our channel we are targeting the UPSC CSC and for that purpose we have started multiple series on our channel that target your problems as well as mains. So in this video we will be uh, uh, discussing about the mains answer writing series. So we also uh, let me inform to you students that we have a mains answer writing series in which what we do we daily give you a certain number of questions of which you have to write the answers. So there was a demand among the students uh, or our subscribers that uh, the model answers of these questions must be discussed over the uh, over the video in the video. Uh, so that uh, we can get an idea about how to write answer, how to practice answer writing in uh, for the purpose of UPSC CSE. So let me inform to them that uh, though it is very difficult to discuss all the questions over the our YouTube video, uh, but we have decided that we will be daily discussing one model answer. So today we have picked uh, uh, picked up uh, the to uh, the question of agrarian distress and its linkage with marketing reform. So let me tell you, friends, that here we will discuss that how agrarian stress in India is linked to market reforms and how uh, it can be addressed. So before starting the answer let me tell you that no answer can be a model answer we are only referring uh, uh, for the purpose of convenience this answer as model answer because uh, uh, had that been the case uh, there would have uh, there have, would have been 100% uh, score of the toppers in UPSC CSC so uh, a topper candidate scores between 50 to 55 percent that means that no answer can be model answer uh, each answer has its own, uh, uh, we can say, positives and negatives. So let's uh, discuss about our agrarian distress in India. So here, uh, let me tell you friends that uh, agrarian distress is often seen in news. So uh, uh, when you see newspapers, there are reports of suicides by farmers and then there is also report of, uh, reports of agitations by farmers in the different parts of the country. And in fact, 2018 was the, was the year in which, uh, which, has, uh, 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 which had seen uh, a, uh, a quite large number of uh, rallies by the farmers uh, in the light of the distress that they face. So here uh, uh, the issue has been uh, linked with marketing reforms also. So it is not just uh, marketing uh, issues, but uh, a marketing issue is one of the various issues that affect uh, the farmer and uh, that contribute to agrarian distress. So friends, uh, the first thing that is uh, that is of importance is the monopoly of APMC. So you might have heard about uh, agricultural produce marketing committees, which are basically committees at the state level uh, where traders uh, engage uh, in exchange with farmers so there is a major issue with these uh, committees because these committees uh, are controlled by uh, traders which behave as cartels uh, uh, they, they, they uh, these traders behave uh, in a in an organized way and what they do they exploit uh, the uh, the farmers poorly organized farmers and also they manipulate the market mechanisms that is fair price is not given to farmers for example uh, if you go to if a farmer goes to a particular APMC then there, there is a uh, there, uh, there are a lot of fee, uh, we can say local taxes that are levied uh, uh, on uh, on selling the things in the uh, in the committee and then there is a kind of we can say mutual settlement between the traders that the price will not be offered uh, from the uh, will, uh, above a particular level so that keeps the price uh, or the remuneration for the farmer very low which uh, which fails to uh, even meet the cost uh, that the farmer has incurred in uh, in producing uh, his or her crop so in that case uh, the monopoly of apmc is, is the major issue so these uh, are governed by state laws and in fact the union government had uh, uh, in the pre in the 16th lok sabha there was a release of model apmc act which uh, which uh, the states were uh, were kind of we can say urged to adopt but the but the states have not adopted it because there is a lobby uh, of these traders that, and and uh, we can say artias that work in uh, this uh, in these committees and that's why this doesn't happen so the reform is not happening so it is a major issue so friends other thing is essential commodities act 1955 so uh, let me tell you that 1955 as is now it is a uh, these are the years of our independence when we just became independent so th uh, that was the time when there was lot of uh, uh, there was an issue of uh, food security in india so though it is uh, it is an issue now as well but uh, but at the time of independence uh, there were lot of uh, means or we can say also there was a lot of food shortage and uh, there was a huge danger of we can say 
uh, uh, people uh, kind of go, uh, getting eliminated by 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 starvation so that uh, at that time it was necessary also at that time the the population of india was uh, very very poor because of the exploitation by the british colonial government so at that time it, uh, this essential commodities act was uh, in, uh, introduced in 1955 so as to ensure that uh, the commodities which are essential for the uh, for the people that are essential for the day to day use their prices are kept at a low price so that uh, uh, how it will be ensured in, it will be ensured uh, apart from the provision of these essential commodities it was it was kind of uh, uh, this act uh, tried to regulate the uh, we can say production and uh, the storage and distribution and transportation of these essential commodities so that uh, no hoarding or anything uh, takes place or the or the rogue elements take advantage of uh, the uh, we can say the uh, exigencies of the uh, poor people so for that purpose this uh, act was introduced but now as uh, the in, as india has progressed now we have surplus food with uh, uh, with us also we have a huge pds distribution network that that is public distribution network uh, system and then we also have uh, we can say improved agricultural practices for example the seeds that that are used by the farmers they are of better quality and then the implements that they use they are of better quality they have tractors and they have irrigation facilities facilities and then uh, uh, there is also uh, we can say uh, exten extension services that are available to the farmers and also government also maintains huge buffer stocks and in fact it is a major issue that uh, uh, the food that is uh, uh, stored in buffer stocks uh, uh, it is kind of we can say getting waste uh, wasted due to the lack of proper infrastructure so uh, this has ensured that there is a round the clock availability of food commodities moreover that uh, uh, we can say uh, in today this context if we say then uh, that then india has uh, a lot of uh, uh, we can say surplus of foreign foreign exchange reserves and if, if in case any exigency arises india can immediately import uh, food grains from outside but in any case that condition will not come as of now so for that purpose uh, uh, this uh, act ha has uh, 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 is is we can say a pro consumer but now the situation has changed but the farmer still suffers as uh, this act is excessively pro consumer act though it was the necessitated at that at that time but now it, there is a need to change the provision of this act because uh, in fact this act is a major hindrance in the investment uh, uh, in in the we can say the it, it it is acting as a stumbling block in the uh, uh, in the uh, private investment because uh, the private sector is not investing in cold storage facilities or food processing industries in village areas rural areas because why there is a lim uh, because there is a limitation on uh, we can say the maximum amount of uh, uh, we can say uh, of a particular commodity the maximum amount that uh, that the uh, or we can say with the maximum stock that a uh, that a particular cold storage infrastructure or uh, facility can can uh, store so uh, due to this reason uh, the uh, the investment is not happening in food processing as well as cold storage infrastructure so you might be knowing that food processing and cold storage infrastructure is very important particularly in india's rural context because food processing can generate uh, important uh, uh, we can say a very very productive livelihood and it can uh, deal the deal with the problem of disguise and uh, unemployment where the uh, the the, uh, the uh, entire family is engaged in the agriculture but their productivity is low so that surplus labor can shift to food processing and also due to value addition the prices that that will be realized by farmers they will be more and also if there there is cold there are cold storage facilities in rural areas then farmers will not be forced to uh, sell their product in distress because uh, uh, now as they don't have cold storage facilities so they 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 are they are in a kind of compulsion to sell their uh, their produce otherwise it gets uh, wasted so uh, they try to uh, realize uh, as much as uh, we can say uh, price they can but uh, they get they, they get very little because because of their poor organization as well as because of their uh, peculiar condition of this uh, distress sale so that's why they are not uh, getting the proper uh, uh, we can say amount th that is justified for their produce so another thing is of about export po export policy so export policy is also uh, faulty at, at present time because uh, 
uh, our export policies in a manner that it uh, it puts uh, unnecessary restrictions on the movement of uh, uh, crops on, uh, on uh, in the on the movement of crops that are produced in India. But uh, uh, at the same time, the, ve uh, the the very same crops are imported duty free uh, uh, out of the global uh, from the global market. So this also adversely affects the farmer because uh, when the global market is giving you a high price, then certainly uh, farmer should sell in the global market. And also other thing is that when uh, when there are restrictions on export and when prices are low in the uh, in the uh, domestic market, then they are also they are further forced to uh, sell their uh, produce even uh, uh, at a very low cost. So this affects adversely uh, and uh, to uh, compounded to this is the problem of uh, allowing a duty free import in the same communities. So there is also need to to address the export policy. So these are if you see carefully then these three things are basically uh, linked with marketing reforms. So you might have understood that why it is important that marketing reforms uh, should be brought in so that to, uh, so that to tackle the problem of agrarian distress. So uh, these are the three broad points but also also then uh, it must be uh, it will be it, it will be wrong to say that only th the, these three things can change everything because there are a lot of issues like from the supply side as well as from the demand side and then from supply side for example there is lack of credit lack of proper technology and there is high dependence on rainfall and poor extension services are there and in fact the poor, there is poor productivity because there is a lot of potential to improve the productivity and thereby the incomes but uh, then there is also issue from demand side so these multiple issues and other issues like we can say uh, the failure of uh, Indian uh, crop produce, uh, 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 the failure of Indian crop produce to meet the uh, uh, these, these phytosanitary, uh, we can say uh, the, the norms that have been set by, for example, European Union or United Nations, uh, so United States. So all these things uh, must be, uh, we can say, addressed if we want to uh, to elevate the problem of rural distress or uh, agricultural distress and also to reduce the f uh, farmer suicides and other. Uh, among other things so only a holistic approach could yield dividends which demands multi-pronged strategy so this was the answer which we decided that we should share with you so that you you should know that how the answers have to be framed so if you like the questions if you like the way then do ensure that you give us feedback do ensure that you like it do ensure that you share it with your friends and the needy people and also if you wish to join our daily mains answer writing initiative and uh, you want to get a competitive edge then you can uh, join for our, uh, for the uh, for uh, for our test series for one month or more than one month that is your choice all the links will be provided in the description box and the, uh, the link has also been provided here so uh, you can use this link to join our uh, test series daily answer writing test series so uh, if in case you join us we will share with you all the model answers that we prepare or we can say all the reference sources that we prepare for the purpose of daily answer writing so thank you friends have a very nice day